Yo, what's going on, guys? Saturday night, Saturday night fever, as I always like to say. Uh, yeah, we are uh, halfway done with our weekend here. Another 27 hours until pre-market opens. Uh, the more I think about these earnings calls, I know we, we tend to stay away from the fundamentals of the company as a whole, right? And sure, that's why, you know, I'm never breaking down any sort of charts or anything. I don't think this follows any other stock on the stock market. This GME, uh, most of the mean stocks, mainly GME and AMC, right? Uh, we all know. We've watched them for months and months and months. But these earnings, too, um, they're expected to be obviously huge. But remember, we had some badass movies that came out the last... Uh, few months here and the theaters obviously opened up too but that's going to bring in some different money so i'm i'm really excited to see what that brings uh monday remember after hours on uh monday we will have the earnings call uh i think you can get to the earnings call on uh through the website through the investors website so i'm getting fired up for that that's cool so you guys we made it halfway through the weekend hopefully nobody stroked out opened up their apps checked the line the line didn't move we're still at that round weird number of 33 dollars even um so yeah um let's just have a fun little video here let's refresh this son of a gun here um Timothy B. asks, here's our question, the question of the, the whole world wants to know, uh, share count wise, do you have any plans to offer a dividend again? Remember, what time on Monday? I don't know, but we have two more days, a day and a half to fire in our votes here. Uh, I want to know if Adam's going to say something about this in the earnings call. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, either way, this is looking good. Obviously, the last week, this has been a huge talked about subject on rough estimates on what the share count could be, um, even going over the the most conservative of conservative, it's still a lot, as in one to two billion is the very, very conservative uh, math on this whole thing, up to a gazillion shares, right? And we all know. There is way more shares. And we're going to touch on an interesting story. I touched on part of it, but I seen a tweet earlier that had me uh, thinking of it. So, yeah, you guys get in. If you have not voted, uh, I have fired the link in, I think, the last four videos or so. So it's out there. It's everywhere uh, out there. Um, this, God dang it, man. This one really fired me up, made me just sick to my stomach here. Billionaire accused of banning wife from NYC, Aspen, and Miami Homes. This is an old article of Kenny G when he got a divorce here with old Anna here, right? This was in 2015. I think his divorce was in 2014, late 2014, whatever. Look at some of these comments on here. Hedge fund billionaire Kenny G's bitter divorce took an even uglier turn when wife Anna Diaz Griffin filed papers allegedly he is trying to push her and the kids out of the family home and threatened to sue her until she has no money left. Citadel founder Kenny G, the richest man in Illinois, said to be worth $5.5 billion. Remember, you guys, this is a long time ago. This is six, seven years ago. Uh, $5.5 billion is being accused uh, by his wife of 11 years for being a bully. Papers filed in Illinois State Court in Chicago on Tuesday said Kenny G recently informed and through the attorneys that he will be terminating her, the, her exclusive occupancy of the former marital residence and will no longer pay the carrying cost of the formal marital residence after February 21. The pricey pad is a penthouse on the 67th floor of 800 North Michigan Avenue bought in 2000 for 6.9 million in 2012 can expanded it by paying 15 million to buy a 7,900 square foot unit on the 66th floor of the Park Tower, the most expensive condo in Chicago history. Boy, I think he's had a history of buying the most expensive homes. Remember, I've touched on a couple of those stupid articles where, you know, I think I, one was uh, he had more, most expensive, more expensive home than uh, Bezos did. So maybe he has some weird uh, obsession with outdoing everyone, right? And a former Goldman Sachs exec up until the wedding in 2003, ran New York hedge fund 
Aragon also claims Ken is refusing to disclose his finances and Stonewall Ann's request for temporary child support while he is paying expenses for their three kids. She alleges he cut off her credit cards and banned her from the homes in New York, Aspen, Miami, and Hawaii. Ann claims that Ken earned $1 billion in 2014 and the end of the year the $24 billion in assets from Citadel. The papers say he's legally strategy is designed to bully Ann and to place as much financial pressure on her as possible. That's really nice, dude. What an ass bag. Kind of sheds a different little bit of a light on there. I did not like this comment up here. Push her and her kids out of the family home. I mean, sure, it's an article, but still. Give her a few bucks, dude. She's got the, the mother of your children, sir. Uh, this here, this is an oldie, too. I kept stumbling across some weird ones today. Fox Business follow-up, ex-Citadel employee reveals rig trading game of market battleship argues defy blockchain tech with change the game. Um, this is old. This is right in the beginning of all of the madness. This was February 5th, so like a week or so after uh, Robin Hood shut down all the madness. This gentleman here talks first. I just want to play a little bit of the second half of this interview. This is the dude, the old Citadel employee. The second dude is part of a uh, fair markets uh, organization. But just take a listen here real quick. Now let's get to Tyler. Tyler, Healthy Markets, the company you work for, is basically a buy-side trade group focused on transparency and keeping conflicts sort of mm -hmm. at a low. What kind of conflict do you see right now in the markets that created this, this hubbub and this drama that's happened with the Reddit room? Yeah, well, we've got a few things. First, Robinhood and other retail brokers, largely the business model, doesn't exist if the SEC and, and FINRA, frankly, enforce best execution requirements. I mean, their revenue streams are, are highly dependent on being able to provide customers slightly inferior prices and sort of hide the transaction costs associated with that. So we have a one part, which is, hey, you have an incentive structure in which retail brokers in particular, are incentivized to help folks take on greater risk. And that's the, in their best interest, the broker's best interest. It also for a retail consumer who might not be all that sophisticated, maybe they are, but they think they're getting more bang for the buck. So it helps the, the market makers can make more profits on, on the order flow. The brokers can get paid more for it. The retail investor thinks, hey, I'm getting a good bang for my buck, a lot of exposure here. But no one's thinking about what the overall risk to the marketplace is and to the customers themselves. Okay, so let's just be clear, though. Some of the hedge funds lost money. They're not just winning, winning, winning. However, the founder of the Reddit room, Wall Street Bets, he's, he doesn't run it anymore, but he was the founder, Jamie Rogozinski, was on Fox Business earlier today, and he basically said that this development over the past couple of weeks proves that the little guy does have a seat at the table. Listen to what he said, and then we'll comment. The Pandora's box is open. There's, there's no going back at this point. You know, it's been... Uh, I believe this has kind of been a catalyst that has uh, shined a spotlight on this, but this has been a long time in the making. There needs to be a, a bigger conversation uh, regarding the playing field. There needs to be a paradigm shift where uh, the, the retail traders are, are taken into account with the rules. You know, for the, the system was clearly designed for the big guys. Okay. <laughs> Patrick, what do you make of that? I mean, he's absolutely right. It was designed for the big guys. If you if you know, like, I don't personally trade at all. Why? Because I know exactly what I'm up against, and there's just no way you will possibly be able to make a better decision than what Citadel's capable of doing. That isn't anything against Citadel, but it is, it's just a realistic truth. Tyler, does that mean that the SEC has got to step in here? We know that starting on February 18th, Vlad Tenev of Robin Hood is going to be in front of that House Financial Services Committee. I hate to see how that goes down because, you know, do they know enough about what the problem is so that they can fix the correct issue? Well, I think there's a, a number of issues that they're going to address on that hearing, but I think there's a couple of things we know right off the bat. We know right now that when you have prices of assets that are nowhere close to what we can think of as the fundamental value, and we know folks are pushing them around, manipulating them out in public, frankly, the things that are posted on Reddit, if they were between two hedge fund managers and nobody else saw them and they were on an email, they would be exhibits in a criminal, if not civil case. So what we have to know is, are the SEC's huh. rules effective? Are they being enforced? 
Are the exchange rules effective? Are they being enforced? If these prices were going to zero instead of infinity, do we think the exchanges would have stepped in? We also obviously have payment for order flow issues, but then we also have things like capital requirements. The reason why Tenet right. is going right now to say, hey, I want to reduce the cap capital requirements, that's why he wants to go to straight through processing, gotcha. because he doesn't want to put up any money. He doesn't want to have to support his yeah. customers' well, trades. Everybody has to so come to uh, the realization that this is not fa fantasy land and you need money to actually float the system. We'll be watching it all. Patrick McConlog. You guys, the reason why I wanted to share that, it had me thinking, it had me kind of flash back to February, and just me alone, right? You guys know watching me, I've been around seven months. Most of you guys watching have been around six, seven months, a few months, enough to know the DD, why you're holding the stock. But I thought about it back in February. Um, I knew absolutely zero. I knew this thing was shorted. I knew we were in this for a short squeeze. But just these guys talking about this back then to where we are at now, you fast forward seven months later, six and a half months later, whatever the math is, how much stuff we have exposed, all of the, the, the DD that is out there now compared to back then, and also opening all of this up. The, the longer they go, the more stuff we uncover. I say it all the time. I hate sounding repetitive, but this is super duper awesome to be a part of that. Um, that's what this whole video reminded me of. The other thing that was crazy is what the guy said on the left, the former Citadel employee said, I do not trade anymore. And he mentions basically being up against Citadel. I mean, good night, man. Jesus, right? So yeah, I wanted to share that. It just had me thinking, you know, good Lord. Um, over here, Tofik over here, he's got the most wonderful Twitter page uh, known to man, right? Um, oh, real quick. He mentioned this KBIO. I touched on this probably a couple months ago on that whole short squeeze that happened. But I love what he read here, and then I also popped it up. I thought it was very, very interesting in case some of you guys did not see it that I shared it a couple months ago. But his tweet here says, here's the story of KBIO is a stock that rose 10,000% in five days when it announced a forced share recall. Please, Lord above us. And the near bankrupt company with a price of 44 cents rose to 45 bucks. Same thing could happen to AMC when those lending shares see the billions of fake shares, right? Here's the story. I shared this a, uh, a long time ago, a couple of months ago, like I said, but I'll pop it in there if you guys want to read it. It's pretty interesting how this whole thing went down. Uh, I think the guy's nickname, the guy was part of his most hated man in America. But if you guys have not read it and you're bored, definitely read through that. It's pretty crazy. Um, one other thing. Shout out to CRS CRP on the AMC stock page. We touched on this last night, you guys, right here. This guy got in and broke it down even more. This was pretty mind blowing. I was going to touch, we're getting long here. I don't want to keep it going. But you guys, I'll pop this in there if you have not read this. Just another manipulation way of just all of this. The God, the more we uncover, man, how long are they going to drag this thing out before somebody gets hauled away in handcuffs? God dang it. Okay, guys, that was a little long. I didn't expect to go that long. I'll, I'll pop those th two things in there for your reading pleasure. And uh, one more day. Nobody freak out. Get outside tomorrow. Do a couple laps around the neighborhood. Some calisthenics maybe. Uh, have a few cocktails or a nice steak dinner. Uh, whatever. We got 24, 27 hours to go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.